Hi, my name is Lena and welcome to my channel. And today is the ShakeTube video number 14 uh, and it's Anthony and Cleopatra. So, uh, guys, I have to uh, come clear uh, that I read this play in Russian, in translation. I have no time at all. So, um, and the beauty of the translation uh, kind of showed me uh, what I was missing out in Shakespearean language uh, because I don't think I can appreciate it at this stage. But I'll try. Uh, so, uh, Anthony and, and Cleopatra, this play, uh, it's... I think it's a tragedy, but it might be a historical play. And this play kind of continues the play of Julius Caesar uh, because we have uh, the same characters. We have uh, Anthony, Mark Anthony, and we have Octavian, Octavius, uh, this Caesar, and uh, many other uh, characters. So, um, this play uh, reminded me at the same time of Richard II and of Romeo and Juliet. So we have Antony and Cleopatra. Antony left his wife and he is living with Cleopatra in Egypt. And um, he, some things that he is not as loyal to Rome as he used to be. And we have Octavius uh, Caesar and uh, all those characters around him. Uh, also Lepidus, who is the third uh, person of Triumvirat. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So he is the third main, main guy in Rome. It's a very strange idea um, to have three leading uh, people instead of one. But anyway, so the storyline it constantly shifts between Egypt and Rome. And sometimes it even uh, takes place in Athens. So, I didn't really get it. I know that Shakespeare wasn't uh, uh, famous for his historical accuracy, and I don't think that all this happened the way he describes. Um, but his main idea is kind of uh, that Cleopatra was to blame for everything, for the fall of Mark Antony, for... Of course, it's a Shakespearean tragedy, that means they killed each other at the end of it. Uh, and why it reminded me of uh, Richard II? Because as soon as Mark Antony was dead, uh, Caesar was telling how much he uh, um, grieved of the fa about the, this fact, how much it saddens him, how much grief it gives him. So he wanted him dead and then he grieves, <laughs> it's like Richard II. And uh, this stupid, stupid, stupid thing, uh, several things, I, I suppose, when uh, Cleopatra uh, pretends to be dead because she's afraid of Mark Antony's anger and when he kills himself, and then she kills herself. That's very much reminded me uh, about Romeo and Juliet. At the same time, reading this play, I kind of get the idea that they all were dead because Octavius uh, the Caesar, Octavius Caesar wanted to rule alone. He wanted to become an emperor, which he did after he got rid of Lepidus and of Mark Antony. 
Well, it, it was very strange play, but it was interesting nevertheless. And uh, I don't really understand the character of... Uh, I didn't really understand the character of Cleopatra. She was kind of very... Um, unstable. <laughs> so, I don't know. She was kind of constantly changing, changing her allegiance, changing uh, her, um, I don't know, ideas. She was try trying to um, go to the battle. She was trying to do battle, kind of. And then she, of course, because she is a woman, <laughs> I suppose this was the idea. She cannot do it all, and she got frightened, and she flees the battle, and all her ships flee the battle, and Mark Antony flees the battle. It's... I don't know. I kind of liked it, and I liked the translation of the language. It was beautiful. I'm so sorry that I cannot appreciate it in original. I will try, I will be reading, I don't know, in the evening, one scene of one play. Well, I don't think I have anything else to say. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Goodbye and happy reading.